What's up guys? We are back with another Masters of the Universe review, taking a look at the recent Mattel Creations exclusive four pack for the 40th anniversary of He-Man. So we've got our very expensive four pack here, and that's kind of been a thing with this set. 150 bucks for four Origins figures does seem really high, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a little, little bit to them because the packaging on this is pretty fantastic. Like, it's very premium in, in just about every respect. So I don't know if it actually increases the price to be basically double, if it's actually warranted or not, but I feel a little better about it actually getting this thing in hand. So to start with, we get the outer mailer box here. So this has the 40th anniversary logo and the bricks, you know, kind of bursting on the front. We've got the 40th logo on both spines. And then the back of the box gives us a timeline for each show along with a shot of that show's He-Man from Filmation to New Adventures to 2000X to the Netflix series. And then of course, you know, you can pop this open and we've actually got, well, a real box within. And this inner box is actually pretty snazzy. Like there's a lot going on here. Again, I don't know if it necessarily means it needs to be this expensive, but this is a great presentation. I'm really happy with it. So it's meant to look like an Eternian TV and a CRT TV at that. So you've got a, an actual convex piece of plastic on the front that covers a foil embossed piece of artwork that showcases He-Man and Skeletor locked in battle throughout the years. That piece is also removable too. There's a lot of embossing all over this. So there's a lot of relief patterning all over this TV, lots of doodads and bits and bobs and the whole deal. The whole box is entirely painted from front to back, top to bottom, side to side. And, and it just looks great. I am really, really happy uh, with this. I mean, this is cool enough on its own, but it's, there's more, there's, there's, there's even more, but wait, there's more. There's all sorts of stuff in here. So you can take the front off and you've got your, your front of your attorney and TV here, and then you've got your piece of artwork also. So if you wanted to use this, you could frame it, do something with it. But you've also got the front of the attorney and TV. You know, you can put yourself in an attorney and TV, put your other figures in front of it, whatever you want to do. This is where I'm most excited about this because of each individual figure getting its own slot. These are supposed to be like TV guides. They're called, they're calling them Motu guides. So we've got our, we've got our filmation which looks pretty fantastic. I mean, it's, it's all done up in sort of like a CG relief kind of thing. So you've got your, your filmation here, and then within this is the figure. And one thing I'm incredibly happy with, and this is me not paying attention, these are removable cards. They just come in and out and you can reseal this figure. So they've got, the, they've got a protector on them to start with. You've got the 40th anniversary logo, you've got your figure in the window, and then the back has unique card art for each figure. So we've got our, our filmation, and of course, you know, you can pop this right back in. The back has like a TV guide. There's a bunch of Easter eggs in this. Uh, this one even calls out Dino Riders specifically, which definitely gets me thinking, but that's, that's, that's neither here nor there. We've got our new adventures, so another CG shot of them, and it's got, uh, you know, like premiere dates and everything, so it's sort of themed to this particular series, this particular season, and then of course you can pop that out. And we've got this figure on his own new adventure style card back. I'm most excited about this one uh, just because it's new adventure style card back and then new adventures backer art as well. You've got your 2000X. Now, of course, we've already got the 2000X He-Man. If you're up to date, you've already got him, but this has a few changes. So you've, we've got updated dates on it. We've got the logo down here on the bottom, and then you've got more of that Easter eggy kind of TV listings on the back. And then you've got your 2000X He-Man in a 2000X style card. And again, removable, fancy backer card art, the whole nine yards. And again, rem the removable cards is a huge, huge thing for me because I just, I didn't know. I thought that they were not removable and I was worried I was never gonna take these out. And then we've got our Netflix CGI He-Man on his own. And we've got, of course, we've got all sorts of Easter eggy things. Like one here says, better call Skeletor. And you've got, which, you know, they, they kind of went all out on some of these to really make it goofy and weird. And then we've got a really striking card back for this guy with really fantastic artwork that is, of course, themed to origin. So this is this is Netflix He-Man as an origin style character, not the Netflix character. Uh, so this one's really, really interesting. I'm curious to see what's going on here. So, I mean, I'm incredibly happy with this packaging. I, again, I don't know that it's necessarily worthy of this price point just to say, well, it's great, so let's increase the price twice. But... You know, this box, all of these, the individual card backs, great presentation. I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to take these out, we'll review them, I'll play around with them, and, and then I might put them back because they look fantastic on cards. So there is a great, great presentation here. You know, I've talked a lot about packaging, so uh, let's just get to it. Let's pull these guys out and take a look. 
And here we go, out of the package, our Motu Origins He-Man 4-pack. So we've got our Filmation, New Adventure, 2000X, and Netflix over here on the right. And first glance, I'm pretty happy with these figures because, well, they're all pretty good. Like, they're all just pretty good figures. I'm even liking the 2000X He-Man quite a bit because of what they did to change up his weapons and his uh, his paint applications. I wasn't the biggest fan of the 2000X figures in the Origins line, but this one uh, is definitely working for me. I'm not sure he's my favorite, but there's a lot going on here. So we're going to take a look at each one individually. We're going to start with Filmation. We'll use him as the articulation guinea pig just because, you know, there's someone out there who doesn't know what Origins are. So let's see what he can do, see how he moves around, and then we will get to the rest of these guys. Now, as far as articulation goes, you know, moving an Origins figure around for the uninitiated, we've got a, a head that can look up pretty good, look down pretty good. You've got tilt side to side, full rotation, of course. Arms out at the shoulders, they rotate. We've got a single jointed rotating elbow. You've got hinges and rotation at the wrist. Waist twist, legs out about that far. They kick forward slightly, but not too far, and they kick backwards slightly. Not a, not a thigh cut up there. There's a little bit of give, but that's about it. Uh, you've got a single-jointed rotating knee here also. And then we've got a boot cut. You've got really nice rockers, and then hinges down at those ankles. So he's not like super, super articulated, but he's he's more articulated than the vintage. It's, a, it's kind of a happy medium without carving up the figure too, too much to retain uh, that vintage Motu five and a half inch aesthetic. So they're, they're all like that. All the, all the figures move exactly the same way uh, pretty much throughout the entire line. And that's going to hold true for these figures in the four pack. This figure in particular, of course, is meant to be our filmation style He-Man. And in many ways, I think they did a pretty good job here. I have one kind of glaring thing that's the more I look at it, the more it bothers me. Uh, and we'll get to it in a second. But he's one of the more basic figures probably in the entire line right now. And that's by virtue of what he is. So, Filmation He-Man, he's He-Man, but he's dumbed down in terms of detail. So he doesn't have a lot going on in his belt. He doesn't have uh, even, you know, like, piping on the bracers. No, nothing like that. There's nothing on the belt at all. Uh, it's just solid orange, which works fine. It's very reminiscent of Filmation. You've got a very basic harness, so just straight piped, uh, you know, harness with the, the red cross there. We've got a big old sheath on his back for his sword. The harness is removable, so if you want to have a naked He-Man, you can do that. Musculature looks good. I mean, this is this is a lot of the same kind of Motu origin stuff that we're used to seeing. So if you're familiar with the, the build quality and the aesthetics of this line, you're going to see a lot more of that with these figures, which is to be expected. Uh, the one thing that's kind of sticking out at me, the more I see it, and of course how, now that I've gotten him under these lights, the face, the head, is not the same flesh tone as the body. Uh, the body is slightly darker than the face. And then there's also this thing where his eyes are slightly looking up, too. Uh, the other figures are generally not like that. Most of them are sort of centered, but he's slightly looking up a little bit. It's not that big of a deal. It's more the, the flesh tone that's bothering me uh, than anything else. But I do think the sculpt is pretty good. I don't think it's necessarily as good as Mattel's Club Grayskull uh, Classics Filmation He-Man. That Filmation He-Man is pretty perfect in terms of aesthetics. But this is pretty close. I think it beats Super 7's attempt at doing a 5.5 inch Filmation He-Man from years back as well. And then we've got our very golden yellow shock of hair, which does look really good. I mean, that this, this right here definitely is going to remind you of Filmation. And... Beyond that, we get a singular accessory with this figure because, of course, Filmation He-Man didn't really have anything. He just had the power sword. So we get a Filmation-style power sword that is vac metal. So, of course, it's still plastic, but there is uh, that vac metal finish on there. So it's not exactly heavy. It's not like die cast or anything. It's not going to have a great heft to it, which is probably good for such uh, small, light figures, too. But this looks tremendous, and I will never not be ex excited about Vac Metal. It's not the greatest thing to, to ever happen uh, to, to modern toys. It's just cool to get it when we get it. It's fun to go back and see that happen. So to get a bunch of that stuff in this particular set is really cool, and it's also really nice you know, to get it on, on a Filmation-style sword. So you can pop that into his sheath, and he's ready to go. So for the most part, I'm pretty happy with this guy. The only thing that's that's truly bothering me, at the end of the day, the only thing that's truly bothering me is the fact that now I can't unsee the fact that that face is just not the same skin tone as, well, the rest of the body. Now our next figure and another new figure in the line is our new Adventures He-Man. And I've been excited about this one more than any of the other figures uh, in this set. 
because, well, I like New Adventures. I liked the show. I watched it as a kid. I was actually old enough to watch it when it was on and new and not just reruns as a kid at the time. I got the toys as a kid, and I was really excited to get them again, well, what, what we could get uh, in classics, too. So uh, it was kind of cool to be able to get this figure. I'm, I'm hopeful that they're going to release him. And, of course, the other new figures here, I'm, I'm assuming we're going to get them in a retail release down the road. Of course, no vac metal, uh, things like that, in regular card backs. But I'm happy to get this guy early. And there is, you know, there's obviously some new stuff here. You know, we've got his particular harness. He's got very specific colors. So he's, you know, mostly naked up top, but he's got the blue pants. He's got his very specific spacey kind of boots and, and I'm pretty happy with the overall look the one thing that, that sticks out at me with this figure though there's some sort of like little notch that's been jabbed into the arm on this figure which is kind of bothering me I'm, I'm curious to see if that's something other people are going to experience or not uh, and it's not going to ruin my day or anything but it is something to point out uh, paintwork on him is okay the the red is kind of splotchy on his belt this thing of course is removable it's also the sheath for our sword and he has, he has a pretty solid head sculpt here. It's definitely one of those heads that, that is reminiscent of, of that show, but it has been transformed in some way to make it fit this aesthetic. Because that show, He-Man was not a big, humongous, bulky guy. Those toys were not big, bulky figures either. They were more in line with toys of, of the time uh, in the early 90s. So he was a little bit different in his design and aesthetic. But this definitely gives him a little bit more of a of a bulky feel. His head's not as huge as some of the other He-Man heads. It's still bigger, though. Uh, so I do think they've they found like maybe a happy medium with this one. And I like his expression. It's a little stoic, but it's not just like sort of dead eyes either. And then, of course, we've got more of that golden yellow, super, super bright hair, so I do really like that. Now, he does have his weapons here, so we get his shield, and this is gold vac metal, which is just awesome. He can hold it. He's got that, uh, he's got the, the sort of clip on one side and then the handle on the other, so he can hold it uh, in this hand and then clip it onto his forearm. But it's got those nice, uh, you know, sculpted sort of spacey idea kind of things that they had going on with that show. But the gold is really doing it for me, and it is super shiny. And then, of course, we've got the very New Adventure style of Power Sword that has its really weird hilt and a slightly shorter blade, but again, done up in silver vac metal. And it's just exciting to get this stuff. I mean, I'll say it again. It's just exciting to get vac metal and to see it on a figure and to get this stuff in vac metal at this size. I think it's pretty cool. So this this is definitely, you know, at the top of the list for me when it comes to figures for, for this one. Uh, this one and, you know, there's a lot of good stuff in this set, but this one is just fun to be able to get. Again, I'm hopeful to see him at retail with maybe some changes, obviously, uh, but to get him in this set with some of this premium stuff for the weaponry, uh, I, I do think it makes it a little bit more worthwhile just to say I've got my new adventures he-Man a little bit early. As we push through the He-Man timeline, the next up is of course going to be the 2000X He-Man. And I've already reviewed that He-Man from the actual main line because we got 2000X He-Man and Skeletor. And you know, at the time, I kind of said that they reminded me of just Origins figures that were dressing up as 2000X characters. And I, I don't necessarily, you know, think that's wrong even in, with this figure. But they did make a little change with his armor. So we've got the red squares painted on him this time. They were not painted on the last figure. This figure does have a lot more deco than some of the other ones, though. Uh, certainly more than Filmation and New Adventures. So the harness, the belt, the whole deal, it's all painted up. Multiple colors, silver, brown, red. We've got the silver bracers. You've got a very unique head sculpt here, which is definitely definitely part of the reason why I said it looks like an Origins figure playing dress-up, because it's, it's a very vintage style He-Man head that happens to have 2000X style sort of, you know, messy hair, like the Jim Halpert haircut almost. Uh, so I, I think it looks a little bit better with some of these additional paint details on the harness, but I still don't think it necessarily looks like 2000X He-Man. It's like a 2000X inspired, which, you know, kind of goes back to me saying it's an Origins figure playing dress-up. That said, you know, that said, this release does get a humongous, humongous, and I can't, I can't overstate this, humongous upgrade when it comes to the weapons, because that was a bit of a downer in the retail release, is that they are just flat silver, uh, just plastic. There's nothing on them. So this guy gets a, gets a whole serious upgrade. So we've got our shield. The shield was painted, but this is vac metal with the red inlay. You've got all of these inlay designs here, just like any other shield in this line. He holds it. It's got the clip on the inside. We've got the 2000X Power Sword that now has the green all over it. So it's not it's not fully, fully painted, 
but it has enough here that breaks it up. Not to mention the fact that the 2000X sword is awesome. I've always liked it. I thought it was a cool idea. The sort of techno sword that they got, the way it, the way it moved, the way it worked in the show, the way it, it powered him up. Uh, so it was cool to see that. And then just cool to get this sort of metallic green vac metal on there also. This really accentuates this weapon in particular because it a lot of those details were just sort of lost on the retail release. But this, this is where it's at. The uh, 2000X Axe is ridiculous. So there is multiple colors on this one. We've got silver for the blades. You've got a gold inlay with green inside that and then red piping up here at the top for like these wires uh, that run atop this sort of powered up techno axe. This is probably one of the, the coolest weapons in the entire line at this point. I think they absolutely killed it with some of these weapons. And, you know, it doesn't change the fact that I still think this is kind of a, a vintage He-Man playing dress up as 2000X, but there's no doubt in my mind that this is the superior version to what we already got at retail. And then last but not least, you know, pulling up the rear, we've got our Netflix He-Man. And aside from one uh, paint QC issue, I am very happy with this guy. You know, I was really curious how he was going to translate from well, let's face it, a really weird proportion design. He's like a gorilla, basically. Humongous chest, humongous arms, and kind of a small waist and, and legs. And they did it really well in the Masterverse line, and I think they did it really nicely here, too. But, of course, he has been constrained to Origins. He is a normal He-Man. He's not some big monster He-Man this time, which I think works surprisingly well. He's got a lot of unique stuff, so like the bracers, the belt, the harness, the boots, all of that stuff. So... I would imagine we're going to see this guy in a retail release, right? I mean, unless it's already been announced and I haven't paid attention to that. Uh, but I think we'll see him in a retail release just so we can get all this stuff reused. But the paintwork for the most part on him is pretty nice. You know, you got the blue here on the little skirt piece. The paintwork on the on the lines for the, the bracers. Paintwork on the arms. I really thought this was going to be glow-in-the-dark. I was really hoping it would be just because of what it is. Uh, it looks like glow-in-the-dark paint. It's not. So that's that was a bit of a bummer. And then you've got the, the emblem painted on his chest. Mine is, to say... To say in one word, it is sloppy. Uh, there's just red everywhere where it's not supposed to be. So that was kind of a bummer. Uh, I will I will live with it. I'm sure I'll, I'm sure I'll manage through this this trying time. But uh, I don't like seeing that. It's very unsightly and it just looks incredibly. It just looks bad. That's just bad paintwork on the chest. Otherwise, I mean, I think he looks tremendous. Thankfully, the head is probably one of the saving graces of this figure after having that paint issue because the head is fantastic. The eyes look great. The eyebrows are really clean and crisp. Everything's very straight. He's got a nice nice little smirk. The sculpt is really well proportioned. It looks fantastic. Just like they nailed it in the Masterverse, I think they really nailed it here too. And that goes doubly for uh, for the hair sculpt because he's got that really crazy, you know, mane of hair and it works really nicely here also. Uh, we do have storage for the sword, as you can see. So the sword has a big peg on it. It goes in a hole in his back. And then we can pop this in his hand. So this is not fully vac metal, really. Uh, the handle is more normal metallic, but the blade, this monster blade, is vac metal. And it looks great. There, all of that detail is in there. So that, that sort of like rune design that this sword has, uh, it's full of detail, reflects light really great, uh, really picks it up very nicely. And he just looks cool. I mean, this is the only accessory he has. Uh, because that's pretty much all you really need for this particular He-Man. But I think they did a solid job on this sword, and it's also enormous. It's basically as big as the entire figure. So outside of that one, that one, it's kind of a big paint issue. Outside of that paint issue, I think this figure is really solid and, and probably is going to be one of the, the more surprising figures in this set for folks because there's a lot of cool stuff on this figure, a lot of new stuff, a lot of intricate paintwork for this line in particular. And then, of course, this monster vac metal sword is, is just cool. So yeah, overall, I'm still really happy with this set, but it's not for everybody. It's definitely one of those things that the packaging is just as integral to the set as the figures themselves, because of course, this is a really expensive set of figures. We get three figures here that are not out in retail waves yet, but they don't necessarily feel like anything extra except for the fact that they have vac metal weapons. It would have been really nice to get some extra hands with this, these figures to make them seem a little bit more deluxe. The figures, though, are really solid. I have a few issues on a couple of them, but overall, I am really happy with them. I really like the three that, you know, we hadn't gotten previously. I love that CGI Netflix He-Man. I'm really digging the new adventure, and they definitely upgraded the 2000X. And, of course, who doesn't want Filmation He-Man on their shelf? Again, though, the box is just as important as this. The presentation is 
amazing. I think everything about it from the outer box all the way down to the cards is incredibly well executed. Just being able to put everything back together and not worry about destroying all of this cool packaging is a big selling point for me. And, and frankly, it is, it is an expensive set, but I am a lot happier with it now that I've got it in hand than I really expected to be. So that's going to do it for this look at the Masters of the Universe 40th Anniversary He-Man 4-Pack. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and until next time.